Hello, it's Karen from Vintage Style Journals. As I mentioned in my last um, upload of my last video, the twelve design of Romeo and Juliet, um, I thought I'd do a little interlude regarding the, the buckle. I cannot for the life of me find these things anywhere at the moment. And this is one of my two that I have left. And that's quite a large one, so I'm not using it on this journal. But um, I thought I really needed to come up with some idea as to what I'm going to do in the meantime before I can get uh, my hands on some of these or something similar. Um, so what I've done is I've traced around this design and the larger design and I've traced them onto card. And um, the reason I've done this is just as a, a stopgap really to see if I can come up with something that's going to look beautiful but also something that you can make yourself if you don't have buckles. Um, I have seen these type of buckles online for well over $140 sometimes so um, that's not what this cost me but you know they're incredibly difficult to find at the moment. Uh, so yeah, a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do and come up with something that's going to be useful and beautiful. Um, in the mind of uh, William Morris, used to say, "Don't have anything in your homes that is not both beautiful and useful or functional." And I take that to heart because I I lay in bed at night and I think of different ideas um, regarding my art and uh, just come up with something <laughs> a little bit different. So the card is just pretty, you know, it's reasonably thick. And what I've done is I've traced them onto here and then I've cut out this part here uh, on the center. So this part here will actually be where your material comes up and over and out again, as I showed you on my other uh, design on the front of my journal. So what I did was uh, I made a few of those and I painted over each of them with uh, just a white gesso. Um, I put one coat on to start with and then I put some texture paste. I just used a stencil to put this little simple design on this one and um, I'm going to go over this in a minute. It's going to look a little bit different but um, yeah you don't have to be uh, too clever just you know use your stencils and I'm sure you know there's some beautiful stencils on the market so you could probably sit the whole stencil over and just put some texture paste in just to give it a a little bit of a, a raised design as you would see in the the buckle itself and it's obviously just very simple compared to the other one um, the other one I did a little bit more fancy I did this on with a syringe this is just texture paste that I put in a syringe and um, just placed it on. It wasn't too difficult to do but all I wanted really was something a little, a little bit interesting on the surface but it would have looked equally beautiful with a just a stencil over the top and some texture paste. Uh, so this is just the beginning. I haven't uh, done an awful lot more than uh, place some colour on these. Um, these are the ones that I've painted over top of the gesso and the texture paste so I've just popped some silver acrylic over top of this one and some gold acrylic over top of this one uh, they're both pretty you know reasonable designs but we'll see what they look like once I put some extra paint on them uh, so that's what I'm going to do at the moment um, just want to just show you how I change the the look of this and and antique it a little bit and uh, we'll get started on that now it's just going to be a quick video this time i promise it's not going to be a 60 minute job like the last one so what i'm doing is i'm picking up some raw umber on my paintbrush and i'm going to pop a tiny bit of paint gray into it just to take away the brown tone and uh, just make it a little bit um, of a gray gray brown tone I did this in my, um, I made a, a paint box in one of my earlier videos and and so that came out quite nicely and I was happy with the way it looks so I'm going to, I might try it on the gold first and um, so all I've got here is just a, a bit of a brown tone on my paintbrush. I'm just going to go over that and dirty that, that colour down a bit. Um, I'm not into bright gold, you might be, but... Um, you know, I like a more of a muted look. So I'm just going to 
um, pop that paint over. In fact, I'm going to use more paint than watered down paint. Um, if you use watered down paint, that's good and it'll give you a little bit more open time, but I'm going to probably use a little bit more paint on my brush than, than water. Um, it looks a bit ugly to start with, but um, it's going to look okay. You'll see once I start to rub back some of that colour. Um, all the way along, I try to help with different um, types of uh, techniques, I suppose. So I'm just looking for something to sit that on so I don't muck up. The... <laughs> I've been painting all over my lovely painted surface here and I don't want to ruin it too much more. So I'll just pop that down on a tissue. But yeah, I'd recommend if you've got a surface and you're going to be painting on it, stick something down on it if you don't want the paint to stay there. Uh, baby wipes will do the job and get it off as much as possible but because this surface is painted I don't particularly want to be using baby wipes on it to rub my design off. Um, so yeah I'm sort of pushing the the colour into the the crevices where the where the paint is and I'm just going to rub that back a little bit you can see that bright gold has toned right down in fact i'm going to use a little bit more Payne's gray on my brush in a minute just so that i can take away the brown look and and just um, tone that brown down a little bit so i've just mixed it in there you can see it's more of a, a dark gray color no point worrying so much about the surface of where the texture is because that's probably going to disappear in a minute the color will be taken off mostly off the surface there but i'm just trying to get in that those gaps because i don't want don't want it to be um too brown <laughs> i know it sounds really silly but i want it to look more of a, a gray gray kind of brown um, i don't know there's probably a name for it Payne's gray probably <laughs> Uh, Payne's Grey is a great colour. It's great for toning uh, all kinds of colours. It can change the colour of, of things if you use it uh, too much. Uh, for instance, if I put it in a red colour, then the tone will be quite a purplish colour once the Payne's Grey goes in because it does have a blue tinge to it. Um, but it is great for using in shading and um, I love to use it with the browns because it um, really just just changes, makes them so much darker and more interesting looking without being, uh, you know, using black, for instance. So, yeah, if, you've, if you're going to get some paints, get your primary colours, but um, then get, uh, get some paints grey as well. And obviously the white you'll need at some point. Now, it looks, looks a little bit loud, and it is, but I'm going to just, I'm trying to get it in all the crevices because I can see some bright gold shining through. Uh, this is easy. You will find it easy. I'm not saying that just because I've done it often, but you'll find that it is quite an easy thing to do. Um, so that's toned that, that gold right down. What I'm going to do now is just... Get some clean paper towel because I've got my dirty paper towel here that I've been using for all my recent paint jobs. Um, I'm a bit, bit of a sting sometimes when it comes to doing things like that, keeping keeping things around just so that I can use them up in the most you know convenient way. So I'm just rubbing off. See where the texture paste is. Just rubbing a little bit firmly on that just so that I can get that texture paste or that texture on the surface design popping up more and clearing off most of that that color i'm liking it with the dark color over top of the gold actually it looks a little bit more like a brass buckle uh, i don't want it to look brass necessarily but um even i might even have a little go and put some silver over it and just see what that looks like in a minute but yeah, so if you're wanting any, uh, if you're wanting the, the paint, I don't know what I've done there, I've dug my fingernail into it, I think I'll just colour that back in because it's gone down to the white. <laughs> Sharpie, sharp nails. All right. Um, 
Yeah, so that's that's the gold one. You can take off so much more paint than what I have if you prefer it that way. Um, maybe just around some of the edges. Uh, might need to just, actually, I think where my nail went in, I've dug in, dug in there, the paint is showing up. Um, I'll just let that dry for a tick. Um, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dip my paper towel into a little bit of water here and I'm going to show you just how much you can remove once your um, your paper towel is is um, a little bit damper. Just gently, gently rub it back to where you want it. See, there's quite a bit of paint that's come off that now. I'll do the same over here. Just little bits and pieces, little places where you've where you've been with the dark paint just rub it back to where you're happy with it um i'm just going for the edges really just rubbing them back a little bit you can leave it as it is i think it looks quite okay as it is um i'm not sure that it looks like a a a true metal buckle but you get my point i hope just in showing you just a little bit of a very easy paint technique but the texture on it i think you know stands out and that's that's what i was going for so i hope that one's been a little bit helpful to you i'm going to go over the silver and uh, just do something similar i'll do the same color i think this is going to look well, you know, I'm more inclined to this kind of colour than, than the gold. Uh, you could even use a rose gold on the, instead of painting the bright gold, you could use some silver with a little bit of um, perhaps uh, naphthol crimson or a, a reddish kind of tone and make up your own rose gold look or you can use the gold and put a little bit of red in it or you can simply use the rose gold paint um, chroma have created a beautiful rose gold paint and i have that but i haven't used it in this particular case because i just wanted to see what that looked like on the gold so i've got the same the same color mix here it's going to look a lot different on the on the silver because obviously it's uh a different background palette i'm trying to get it in i've used more paint than water um, if you want the paint to come off mostly and just get get the paint into the crevices then you would have more water on your brush um, you could even go over the surface with a, a glaze medium as well prior to painting the color over and you'll find that if you do have the glaze medium on the background and you make a mistake or you think well i really don't like that or i want to remove most of that color then because you've got that barrier with the glaze medium you can actually take back most of that color off there and um and then just you know rework your design and and put the color on until you're happy i've gone in quite dark with the um the Payne's gray so it's made it quite a, a khaki kind of browny gray color which i love i love that color on the silver background here so i just want to try and get this all painted in so i can show you um again with the baby wipes um let me just take some of that off and show you how it can come back just with the baby wipes they actually can remove a lot of the paint as well um i've painted in quite heavily here i'm just using the paper towel at the moment i may need to go over that again with the baby wipe um, i'd recommend that you do it in parts do little bits particularly if you're not using a lot of water and absolutely if you're not using a glaze medium to uh, protect the surface um, just make sure that you just do it in in patches i suppose work work in little bits that's what i did with my little box when i made it and it's just a fantastic little workshop i love to do i'm going to put a little bit more water on my brush i think just so that i can work a little bit quicker getting it all into the crevices there 
always put more on and take it off as you need. Um, it's really a killer on your brushes, so don't use your best quality brush for this. Um, use one that's a little bit of a shaggy dog if, you, if you've got them, like I do. This is a reason, reasonably good brush. It's just that I'm abusing it a little bit at the moment by poking into the, the actual texture at the background there. Um, yeah, so I'm happy with the way these are turning out. I think, you know, they're going to be useful pieces. Even even that dark colour there is quite nice, I think. Um, pop that down so I don't paint my hand. I get paint all over me all the time. Uh, obviously, it washes off. It's not like oils. Oils are a little bit more tricky to, to get off if you've got them on. I try not to put my fingernail in <laughs> again and rip up the paint so I'm gonna gonna take some of this paint back but I'm not going to take it all back um, I'm going to show you the difference between using the baby wipe and and just the um, the the paper towel just want to get it right in there into those crevices um i kind of like the look of the dark color on the on top of the texture paste i, I think you know i really don't want to take too much of that back but i will for this tutorial and then i'll repaint over top of it i think i'll keep a lot of that just because i'll i'll use this buckle in something a little bit more um not a dark <laughs> But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll make it look a little bit more vintage. So what I'll do is I'll get my baby wipe if I can find them. My desk is a bit of a shambles at the moment because I've been doing a bit of painting. And um, not really super messy, but um, I've got quite a few projects on the go. Just sanguine type personality. We, we tend to do that. So I've got the baby wipe here. I'm just going to go around and you'll see just how much paint that can take off. Because this is quite dry now. I think even a little bit of brown might go nicely. A little bit more of a, a brown tone in here might go nicely. So it's not all so dark looking. It looks kind of medieval. <laughs> If that's the look you're going for, then this is the perfect colour uh, to use. So I'm just using quite a gentle touch, but I am rubbing back a lot of that paint. And we'll see what it looks like in a minute. I might pop some lace through and just have a little squeeze. This is not a main issue because that's going to be covered, but I think it should all be painted. Um, regardless but you can see what you can make out of a bit of cardboard goodness gracious what's it not even two bucks worth the paints would be the thing that would cost you the most but if you've already got those you're laughing so alrighty so I'm gonna just leave it at that at the moment and I'm going to just grab some lace if I can find any um, I'll just put some material through it for a start and just see what you think so I'm just going to use this material in my journal, uh, the one that I cut my dress <laughs> the other day. So, yeah, no, that's not showing it up too nicely. I'll get some lace and I'll, yeah, I don't know if I've got any on my desk here. Bear with me. Okay, so I've got some gorgeous lace here. I'm not necessarily going to use this one when I when I use the buckle, but just for the sake of demo, just gonna pop this through and see what it looks like. Working upside down with the lace here. All right, so just under, actually a lighter lace might look nice in this one. Uh, this color, I'll pop it through the gold as well so you can see. You know, just move that dirty tissue away. And again, there you've got your your buckle look. And unless you touch it, 
you wouldn't really know that that's just cardboard so you could just place that down on the front of your journal with some different color lace so i don't think this lace works necessarily well with this this background probably a lighter lace um we'll try it no it's too big for that one get some more So we'll use this piece. These are gorgeous. They're from my piano roll paper. What I've done is I've taken the lace off and uh, the paper off. They've got two ends. I've just pulled the end off this one for a minute. Um, but I've, I usually put reams and reams of my laces on these things. They make wonderful um you know bobbins i suppose for my lace so we'll just try it with the lighter lace and see what you think I'll go that way yeah i think the lighter lace is obviously going to work better with that that color background you could even just use a, um, a simple netting or something through this as well but i really love that look i think that's gorgeous i just want to put it through the gold one and have a quick squeeze Kind of wrecking my lace a little bit here because I'm trying to work fast for you so that this is not super long video. Yeah. Or even, you know, if you're tea staining the way that I do, I do a lot of tea and coffee staining for my papers, so I don't tend to put white paper in anything. I like to colour it up a bit. But if you're doing that, um, you know, just the gauze that you can buy um even if you buy a gauze bandage <laughs> you know and stain that up a little bit that'll look equally beautiful through this but i think even some just some simple netting would look lovely through it and then you can just pop them on the top of your your journals just as a decoration you can have lots of stuff coming out from underneath it uh the sky's the limit but i just figured that i wanted to show you what i've been up to with my making my buckles <laughs> and so i hope that's been a helpful video just the beginnings here star quite always put the gesso down because it actually seals the back of it seals the cardboard so that your paint is not soaking into it and you're needing to use more uh, good quality paint rather the gesso is good quality but it's a cheaper option for putting down as a background sealant so yeah i just um i'm quite happy with the way they turned out and i hope hope it's been a useful video for you feel free to give me a thumbs up if you like it send me a comment if you uh, have any questions or any comments i'm always happy to receive those and i do appreciate you watching my videos